Welcome back, Gypsies. I'm Emily, the Gypsy Boosh, welcoming you to our Freeform channel and this Monday's video, based on a true creepy story. If this is your first visit, I hope you consider subscribing and dropping by from time to time, joining our free-spirited Gypsy tribe. For now, let's get into this story, inspired by creepy events from my life. This story is sponsored by Frozen in Fear. Once upon a creepy time in college, Mimi and her friend Siobhan had an early morning dining hall job, making lunches later delivered to Head Start programs in the city. Monday through Friday, Mimi woke up at 4.30 and quietly got ready in the dorm bathroom before meeting her friend on the walk to be at work by 5 a.m. When Mimi stepped off the elevator in the dorm lobby, she noticed she had one missed call while putting her phone on silent. Must be Siobhan, she thought, as her friend usually called to make sure she was on the way. There were two hills to climb, one between their dorms and another between Siobhan's dorm and the Commons building where the dining hall was located. Snow had already fallen a few inches, covering all outdoors with a soft white dusting. She reached the top of the first hill and noticed a figure sitting in the shadows of the lamppost lights. Siobhan usually waited at the top of the second hill, and although she didn't see her friend, this wasn't her. She couldn't quite make out the face or see limbs, but as she got a little closer, she saw that what should have been the head was grotesquely misshapen and the figure seemed to be floating, stationary, in the middle of the sidewalk. There were no prints in the snow, below or behind it. The creature had also now noticed Mimi, and they were both frozen in time, staring at each other, or so Mimi assumed, since she couldn't see a face. She slowly walked forward again, descending the top of the first hill, and the creature moved toward her. Mimi stopped, pulse quickening. She pulled out her phone and called Siobhan. No answer. There was really no way to work other than this path. She was starting to wish Siobhan would answer and wondered why she wasn't waiting at the top of the second hill at this point as she usually was. Mimi started forward again and so did the creature. She tried to call Siobhan again but there was still no answer. If she was already at work, she wouldn't be able to, Mimi thought. She decided to back up a bit, but the creature still came towards her. It only seemed to halt when she didn't walk. Mimi couldn't stand on that path all morning. Her thoughts raced for a solution. Breaking the deafening silence was a car alarm, sounding quickly, then stopping. It went off again, and both of them turned to look to the right in the direction of the parking lot. Mimi actually recognized the car as her best friend Myra's. The car alarm went off again, and this time Mimi ran for the car, seeing out of the corner of her eye the creature gliding across the snowy field as well, making a beeline towards her. Mimi reached the car and hit the keypad code she thankfully knew, since Myra often let her borrow the car to make mall runs or go to get her hair braided at her cousin's in the city. Locked inside, she searched the field and path for the floating entity, but saw nothing. She called her friend Myra to thank her and asked why she had hit the car alarm. Hey, Myra, I'm glad you did it, but why did you hit your car alarm so much? I was walking back from the study room and saw you acting weird on the path like you were sleepwalking. I was trying to call you, but your phone must be on silent. What's up? Oh, shit. Yeah, I put it on silent before I go to work so I don't forget. I saw something on the sidewalk that kind of freaked me out, so I was scared to walk ahead. Did you happen to see Siobhan? Not outside, but I did see her leave her room. So she's probably at work already. Okay, thanks again, girl. You want to drive over to the commons? I can remote start the car for you. 
Yes, girl, that would be a big help because I'm too freaked to get out. No problem. I'd be freaked too. I'll pick it up when I head over at lunch. Mimi drove Myra's car and parked in the commons lot, looking around before getting out. The bread guys she was cool with were here for drop-off as usual, so she hurried out of the car when John was outside in his truck. Mimi greeted him and hustled inside to clock in. She had nearly forgotten about her sidewalk spirit stalker after grabbing some bacon and Italian cream cake scraps the cooks always set aside for her. Not an ideal breakfast, but her treat since accepting this early morning job. She asked if anyone had seen Siobhan and was told she was down in storage. She must be getting the containers the two used to pack and seal sandwiches. Mimi headed down the stairs, calling Siobhan's name. It was always dark and warm down in storage, so sometimes the girls may sit and fall asleep on the boxes. Mimi looked down the row where the sandwich containers were. She saw Siobhan. Her friend was not asleep on the boxes or answering her. Siobhan was limbless, head misshapen, and simply turned and floated towards Mimi, whose voice was now caught in her throat and body frozen in fear. The university and authorities didn't solve the missing person cases until the winter was over. They found all the bodies once the winter thaw came. Siobhan's in the creek between the dorms, Mimi's in the storage room, and countless others that disappeared after them during the early hours of the winter mornings. This is just a warning to those who encounter a strange spirit along the way in the wee hours of the morning. Steer clear, and whatever you do, just keep moving. Thank you for listening to our Based on a Creepy Story. I really thank you for coming through and I really appreciate you listening to the end. Please let me know in the comments if you've ever had a creepy story along a walking path or even a creepy college story that you want to share. Once again, I really appreciate you coming through and I hope you decide to join our Gypsy Tribe. Come back again and I'll see you next time. Later, Gypsies.